Hey, you made it back yet again. That is fantastic. Well, we have to see how the letter ends. We're in the middle of the last chapter. Right. Is the ending gonna be a cliffhanger? Is there gonna be a sequel? Well, since this letter is called First John, I'm pretty sure there's a sequel. Right. Second John. And Third John. <gasps> it's a trilogy. But no fourth, John. I guess the third one wasn't very good. That's not really how books in the Bible work. We have three letters from John, and they are all in the Bible. He didn't write the second one because the first one was such a big hit? Mm, no. In fact, they're probably not even in the Bible in the order he wrote them. Uh, they seem to be ordered from longest to shortest. But let's get going. Emily, can you read chapter 5, verses 6 through 12? Sure can, Mr. Phil. Jesus Christ is the one who came with water and with blood. He did not come by water only. He came by both water and blood. And the Spirit says that this is true. The Spirit is the truth. So, there are three witnesses. The Spirit, the water, and the blood. These three witnesses agree. Wait, stop there. You gotta stop saying blood. Blah. Blah. Oh, sorry. I forgot you have a thing about blood. Blah. What is this about? Water? Blood? The spirit? Jesus came by water and blood? Well, let's see. If Jesus came by water, it means he came on a boat, or a canoe, or a jet ski. But if he also came by blah, what is John talking about? Yeah, this part is a little tricky. So, there are three witnesses. The spirit, the water, and the blood. These three witnesses agree. Now, back when Jesus lived, if you wanted to prove something was true in court, you needed two or three witnesses. That means two or three different people who could say, yep, what he's saying is true. So, John is trying to prove something is true? Exactly. And he's lined up three witnesses. The Holy Spirit... And water and blood. Does he know two of his witnesses are liquids? Remember the last time John talked about blood, he was using it as a symbol. Blood and water here aren't liquids. They're events. <gasps> I remember! When John talked about blood before, he was talking about Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. Right, an event that happened at the very end of Jesus' ministry. So what's the water? When Jesus took a bath? Closer than you think. A shower? At the very beginning of Jesus' ministry, the first thing that happened to him is that he was baptized by John the Baptist. He was dunked in a river. <gasps> and was the river full of water? Yes. So we've got two events, the baptism at the beginning of Jesus' ministry and his death on the cross at the very end. These are two of John's three witnesses about Jesus. But what does a baptism and a death say about Jesus? By themselves, nothing. Oh, does John know that? Uh, yes, he does. Lots of people were baptized by John the Baptist, and unfortunately, the Romans killed a lot of people on crosses. But John is actually pointing to things that happened after Jesus was baptized and right after he died on the cross. Right after Jesus was baptized, as he came up out of the water, a voice came out of heaven saying, This is my son. It was God the Father, speaking so everyone could hear him, saying, Jesus is the Son of God. Whoa. That's the witness of the water. That's the witness of the water. And what happened after Jesus died on the cross that would be another witness? Well, Jesus died on a Friday. What happened on Sunday morning? He rose from the dead. That's right. He didn't stay dead. And that told everyone that Jesus was very special. Lots of people died on crosses, but they stayed dead. Jesus didn't stay dead, and that meant Jesus had power over death. And the power to give us life? A forever kind of life, like his? Yep, a power that only comes from God the Father through his Son, Jesus, the Son of God. That's the witness of the blah, the blah. The blood. What she said. So John has three witnesses. The water, where God said Jesus was his Son, the blood, where God proved Jesus was his son, and the Spirit of God that inspired the apostles like John to write all this down and teach it to us, 
even today. Uh, Emily, can you read verses 9 through 12? Sure thing. We believe people when they say something is true, but what God says is more important. And he has told us the truth about his own son. Anyone who believes in the Son of God has the truth that God told us. Anyone who does not believe makes God a liar. He does not believe what God told us about his Son. This is what God told us. God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. But the person who does not have the Son of God does not have life. So John is saying a couple of things. God has offered us eternal life, the forever kind of life with him, and that life comes through Jesus, his Son. If you don't believe the witnesses about Jesus, you're calling God a liar. And if you reject Jesus, then he can't give you the forever kind of life with God. If you reject what God has offered you, you'll miss out on everything. I sure wouldn't want to miss out on everything. Neither would I. What God has offered us is the best thing we could possibly have. Who would want to miss that? See you next time.